If I asked you what this was, you'd probably say it was a tablet. And if you did, you'd only be half right. And I'm gonna prove that in the first few features of this video. Then, I'm gonna show you guys more than 50 other unknown features for the entire Tab S8 family. Let's get started. The Tab S8 Ultra works as an extra screen for your desktop or laptop with S Pen support, which means you could use your S Pen in any desktop application, whether it be Photoshop, a PDF to mark up, engineering schematics, or whatever else you'd need a precision stylus for. The only caveat is that this only works with Windows computers. To enable this, go to your toggles and swipe across until you find something called second screen and tap that. Next, select which type of mode you wanna connect for. So if you're gonna be using your stylus, you're gonna want a faster response, so choose the drawing gaming mode. And if you're not gonna be using the stylus, then you can go with video mode for smoother playback. Now just press the Windows key plus K on the keyboard connected to your computer and select the Tab S8 Ultra in the pop-up. If you're gonna be using the S Pen, make sure you check the box that says allow mouse, keyboard, touch, and pen input from this device. By default, you may notice that there's black bars at the top and bottom of your Tab S8 or S8 Ultra screen when you're connected in this mode. Fortunately, there's an easy way to fix that. All you have to do is install an application called Second Screen on your Windows 11 computer. Right now, I'm controlling my Windows 11 computer from my Tab S8 Ultra, so I can show you right here. I'm just gonna go to my Start menu, then tap in the search icon, and type in the word Store. You'll see Microsoft Store there. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Then I'm gonna type in Second Screen in the search bar, and search for that. There's a second screen application. I'm gonna select that and install it. I've personally already installed it, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it. And it's gonna bring up this panel here. Now, once you install the application, you will have to disconnect, then reconnect your tablet screen. But once you've reconnected, you should see this display settings option. Go ahead and tap that. And it's going to bring up your system's display settings. So you can see I have the main monitor selected. I'm gonna to switch to the tablet screen, then scroll down a little bit. And you'll see an option here called Display Resolution. And if you select this, since I installed that application, I'll now have the option to use the full resolution of the tablet, which will get rid of the black bars at the top and bottom of the screen. If you have the book cover keyboard, you can go to Settings, then scroll down until you get to General Management, then select Physical Keyboard, and that'll bring you to this menu where you can wirelessly share your keyboard with any other device that accepts a Bluetooth keyboard input. So that means any other computer, tablet, or even a smartphone. To set it up, just select a remote device. And if your other device is a Samsung device, you'll immediately get a pop-up on that device asking you to allow the connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow the connection and I'm gonna tap okay over here. Then I'll tap pair. So now anything I type on my Tab S8 Ultra keyboard is gonna get sent directly to my Galaxy S22 Ultra. And the mouse input also works. And if you wanna quickly switch which device you're controlling, all you have to do is press the command and language keys together. And just like that, I'm now controlling the Tab S8 Ultra again. If the other device you're connecting to is not a Samsung device, like this iPad, for example, all you have to do is go to Bluetooth settings on that device and select the Tab S8 Ultra from the Bluetooth options. Then tap pair on both devices, then tap allow. And now I'll be able to use my Tab S8 Ultra's keyboard to control my iPad. Similar to sharing your keyboard with other devices, there's another great feature that works if you first disable this one, then go to advanced features, and then you'll see an option here called multi-control. If you enable this, it'll allow you to use a Samsung Galaxy Book laptop to control your Tab S8 or Tab S8 Ultra. But not only can you control the tablet from the Galaxy Book, but you can also drag and drop things like photos and files between the two devices. And in case you're wondering, if I didn't first disable this share keyboard option, then tried to enable this feature, I would just get a pop-up telling me I can't have both on at the same time. If you swipe down twice to reveal your quick toggles, you'll see an option called Dex. If you tap this toggle, or if you have a Samsung keyboard and hold the function key and tap the word DEX in the upper right corner, you'll enable something called Samsung DEX. And this will give you a full desktop experience, complete with a desktop with shortcuts, desktop versions of Microsoft Office apps, floating window support with the ability to snap windows, folders with drag and drop support, a desktop style web browser, and more. This is why I highly recommend getting a keyboard, especially for the Tab S8 Ultra, because without a keyboard and trackpad, you're missing out big time on what the Tab S8 Ultra is capable of. This here is Samsung's official book cover keyboard, and I'll have a link down in the description if you're interested, but honestly, any Bluetooth keyboard and mouse would work great with this. Connecting this to an external monitor using the USB-C port will allow you to run DeX on the external monitor and keep your tablet in Android mode so you can be doing separate things on each screen. One important thing to note here is that by default, when you connect an external monitor, it'll just mirror your tablet's screen. 
To have DEX on your monitor and regular tablet mode on the tablet, you need to go to Settings, then scroll down to Advanced Features, then go to Samsung DEX, then enable Auto Start when HDMI is enabled. The Tab S8 Ultra is capable of super fast charging 2.0, which charges at about 45 watts. And I've verified this with this digital tester here. You can see that it's charging at about 41 watts. And this will charge your Tab S8 Ultra from zero to 100% in about an hour and a half. In order to get this charge speed, you do need a 45 watt capable charger, as well as a 45 watt capable cable. And for that, I recommend Samsung's official charger. If you wanna pick one up for yourself, I'll put a link to it down in the description. If you plug your Tab S8 Ultra directly into another device like the Galaxy S22 Ultra, you can actually start fast charging that device. Now by default, you'll see that it's just charging at a pretty slow speed, but if you turn the screen off on your Tab S8 Ultra, that's when it's gonna switch to fast charging. And in case you're wondering, this also works with the smaller Tab S8 as well. So you can see I'm slow charging now, but if I turn the screen off, it switches to fast charging. If you also own a recent Samsung flagship device like the Galaxy S22 Ultra, and you're using the Samsung Notes application on your tablet, you'll see an icon in the upper right corner. And if you tap this, you'll turn your phone into a writing palette for quick access to all of the drawing features. So if I wanna switch my pen type, I can just tap here, tap a different color, and it immediately takes effect on the Tab S8 Ultra. And again, I can jump back to a different pen in a different color, and it immediately takes effect again. You also have control of things like undo and redo as well. And you also have access to all of these shortcuts here, allowing you to do things like make shapes a lot easier. And if you wanna switch the controls back to the tablet, all you have to do is either tap this icon in the upper right corner of your phone, or this icon here on the tablet. Now all the controls will appear back at the top. When you plug your tablet in to charge it, you'll see an icon pop up in the bottom left corner. And if you tap that icon, you'll enable something called Daily Board. And this acts as a screensaver, giving you access to lots of useful information. For starters, you get a clock with a date. And over time, that's going to change to show you the local weather if you allow it to. And after a few more seconds, it'll show you the date. If I swipe over, I'll get to this drawing pad here. And if I tap this little pencil icon here, I can quickly write a note. And when I tap Done, it's gonna keep it on the screensaver. If I tap the icon next to it, it's gonna save it to the gallery. And if I tap the icon next to that, it'll disable the drawing animation that happens when you switch to the screen. And for reference, that drawing animation looks like this. Swiping to the right again reveals all of my SmartThings devices, and I can control them from here. And if I swipe up or down on this list, I can see all of my devices. And I also have access to all of my SmartThings scenes. In the upper right corner, you have the time and date, as well as the option to show your local weather. The SmartThings items can also be long pressed for more settings specific to that device. At the top of the SmartThings page, you'll see the SmartThings icon, and if you tap this, it'll take you right into the SmartThings menu where you get access to all of your SmartThings features. Swiping over again takes me to a gallery that shows some of the photos I have saved to this device. And if I tap this icon in the bottom right corner, I get a few different display options. This one here is a pan and zoom option. I can also switch to a zoom and fade option where it fades into the photo, then zooms into it. Then it'll fade over to the next photo and zoom into that. If I tap this again, I can then switch to Picture Mosaic. This is a really cool one that shows all of the images, then pans around and zooms in on different images. Swiping over again, it takes me back to the clock screen. In the top, you may have noticed that I get music controls up here, so I can play pause my music. I can also skip forward and backward through the tracks. And if I tap the track, I can see more information on it. And if I tap the track again, it will take me right into my playlist. Back on this screen, if I tap this little icon in the top right corner, I get the option to increase or decrease the volume. Tapping this little sun icon allows me to change the brightness of this screen, and I can also use adaptive brightness. Tapping this X in the upper right corner takes me back to the other screensaver pages, and tapping the three dots in the upper right corner allows me to get to the settings to customize this whole thing. So let's go ahead and jump in there, and you can see there's a lot you can customize with a daily board. So if I tap the slideshow text, this will allow me to select which specific albums are shown in the slideshow. I can also change the order from first to last or shuffle. I can change the transition speed, and I can also change the transition style again here. I can also enable or disable showing the clock and weather on the slideshow page as well. Backing out, I can also change the time, weather, and calendar page. This allows me to change the clock style and also allows me to show today's schedule. Jumping into the smart things options, you have the option to select which specific scenes and devices you want to have access to. So if there's specific scenes or devices you don't want to show up on that page, you can just deselect them here. 
These toggles to the right just enable or disable those individual pages. Further down, you also get the option to automatically start daily board whenever you're charging the device. And if you tap the text here, you get the option to set the auto start angle. And what this does is allow you to pick a specific range that you want it to auto start with. So right now, if the tablet is flat or at an angle of up to 150 degrees, then it'll auto start daily board whenever I plug the device in to charge it. But if I had it at an angle higher than 150 degrees, like if I'm using it with a keyboard, then daily board would not automatically start when I plug the tablet in. Adding daily board to the app screen allows you to start daily board anytime you want, even if you're not plugged in. You can also enable dark mode for daily board and select the specific time that you want it to start or stop. You can also have it always in dark mode or have it change with sunrise and sunset for your local time. And for reference, here's what daily board would look like in dark mode. All of the pages switch to a black background with white text instead. And the last option for daily board is to turn off on a schedule. So if there's a specific time that you want to shut off at, you can select that here. This would be good if you keep your tablet on your nightstand and want to use it as a bedtime clock, but want to have it turn off automatically after you fall asleep. If you go to settings, then display, and scroll down until you see navigation bar and tap that, you get the option to switch to swipe gestures, which gives you iPad-like control. This means you can swipe up to go home, swipe up and hold to show all of your recent applications. And if you're inside of an application, you can swipe across the bottom to switch between your most recently used applications. And if you tap more options, you can change the gesture sensitivity. So if your swipe gestures aren't always registered, you can increase the sensitivity. You can also switch to this three area option. So if I swipe from this left area, it'll open up my recent applications. Swiping from the center will go home and swiping from the right will go back. Speaking of the back button, if you're using the regular swipe mode, you can just swipe in from the right or left edges to go back. And the best thing with the back gesture is it works in any application. Unlike with something like the iPad, where the back gesture only works in applications that have it enabled. If you want an even cleaner look on your tablet, you can disable the gesture hint, and that gets rid of this bar on the bottom. However, if you disable that bar, you'll have to also enable the option to switch apps when the hint is hidden, and that's going to let you swipe across the bottom to switch between your applications. If I didn't enable this, I'd no longer be able to swipe across the bottom to switch apps. One important change when using gestures is that if you want to access Google Assistant, you can no longer swipe up and hold from the center. Instead, you just swipe up and hold from one of the corners. However, if you're using the swipe from bottom option, then swiping up from the center does work to activate Google Assistant. And if you use the S Pen often for drawing and you often write or draw near the edges of the screen, you can block gestures with the S Pen so that you don't accidentally navigate to a different page when you're just trying to draw with your S Pen. Switching back to the regular buttons, there's another important feature I want to show you here. The first one is that you can switch which side the back button is on. So if you'd prefer it to be on the left side, you can switch that here. More importantly, you get the option to switch the button position to either the left or the right. And this makes it much easier to reach all the buttons if you're holding the tablet in your hands. If we back out just one page in the display settings, I do want to point out one more important feature and it's this touch sensitivity option. And this is something that you should enable if you're using a screen protector with your device, because depending on how thick your screen protector is, it may make the touch input not be as accurate. If you also own a Samsung smartphone, then you'll definitely want to enable these next two features. Go to settings, then scroll down to advanced features, then enable both call and text on other devices, as well as continue apps on other devices. And you'll need to enable these features on both your tablet and your phone. Once these features are enabled, any calls or texts that come to your phone are automatically going to get forwarded to your tablet. So if I go home, then to my messages application, I can see all of my messages and reply to them right on the tablet. Not only can I reply to messages, but I can also start new messages. And if I open up the phone application, I can make a call right from my tablet. The one caveat with this is that both devices need to be on the same Wi-Fi network if you want to make a call with the tablet. However, if you want to send or receive messages, only the tablet needs to be on Wi-Fi. So that means if you accidentally left your phone in the car, but you still have your tablet with you and your tablet's on Wi-Fi, you'll still be able to send and receive messages. Continue apps on other devices takes this a step further by allowing you to pick up where you left off with the Samsung Notes app and the Samsung Internet app. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to go ahead and open up the Samsung Notes app on my Tab S8 Ultra. Now I'm just going to press the Recent Apps button on my Galaxy S22 Ultra, and you'll see an option here called Continued from your tablet. If I tap this, it's going to automatically open up the same note on the tablet to the same page. And the same is true for the Samsung Internet application. So if I'm looking at a website on my phone, I can just tap the Recent Apps button on the tablet, and at the top, I'll get this option here called Continued from your phone, 
and if I tap this, it'll automatically open up the same page on the tablet. Samsung takes this a step further by allowing you to quickly copy and paste images between the two devices. So if I were to just long press this image on the tablet, then tap copy image, just a few seconds later, you'll see that appear right here on my phone and I can paste that right into the messages app. And to be clear, this copy and paste function works both ways and works with both images and text. If instead of sharing text and images, you wanna share something much larger like this two gigabyte video file, you can do that incredibly quickly if both devices are Samsung devices. To do that, just select the video you wanna share or group of videos, then tap the share icon, then choose this option here called quick share. This is gonna search for nearby Samsung devices, and when it finds it, it'll put them in this box right here. Now, if I tap this, it'll automatically start transferring the files to the other device using Wi-Fi instead of Bluetooth, so the transfer happens much faster. Now, the reason mine transfers automatically is because I've already set this up on both devices. If this is the first time you make the transfer, you'll have to accept it on your other device before the transfer will start. The built-in keyboard is pretty good, but the size of the keyboard may not be suitable for everyone. You can quickly change the size of the keyboard by tapping these three dots in the upper right corner, then swiping across until you see keyboard size. Go ahead and tap that, and now you'll be given little handles so you can make the keyboard wider, taller, shorter, and you can even move it around the screen if you'd prefer. And if you wanna go back to the default size, just tap reset. If you're gonna be holding the tablet in your hands, it's gonna be pretty hard to reach the keys with your thumbs. So in that case, you can just tap this icon right here and that'll push the keyboard to either side. And if you want, you can jump back over to these settings over here and change the keyboard size for this as well. So if you wanna move it further to the edge to make it easier to reach, you can do that. You can make it smaller or larger and again, move it around however you'd like. The floating keyboard has an extra tick up its sleeve if you go and adjust the size of this one. You can see here that there's this new option called transparency. And if I push this up, you can see that the keyboard becomes transparent so I can easily see what's behind it while I'm typing. So if I tap done here and drag this over the image, you can still see the image behind the keyboard, but the keyboard is still visible enough that you could use it to type. And if at any point you wanna switch from the floating keyboard back to the regular keyboard, just drag it down to the bottom and then let go. If you're trying to edit some text and you wanna to get to a very precise location without trying to just tap until you get there, you can actually just hold the space bar and then just drag left, right, up, or down to navigate through your text. If you're someone who prefers to handwrite everything instead of using this keyboard, but you still prefer having digital text, then you can tap this back arrow to get rid of the suggestions, then tap this T icon, and that'll turn this bottom section into a canvas that you can write on. And as you can see, this works incredibly well, even when I'm trying to write as terribly as possible. Specifically with the Samsung Notes application, if I tap this little pen icon with a T next to it, I can actually handwrite my notes and have them automatically converted to digital text as I write them without needing the keyboard open. One of the benefits of writing notes like this is that I can now use S Pen gestures to do things like link two words if I accidentally had an extra space, or I can add a space in between two words, and you can even quickly delete words by crossing them out. If you wanna handwrite text in a field that doesn't natively support it, you can enable that feature by bringing up the keyboard and going to settings, then scrolling down to the bottom, and you'll see an option called S Pen to text. All you have to do is enable this feature, then go back to the application you were in, and just start writing directly in the text field. And to be clear, this does work in any application, not just Samsung apps. And another great thing about this feature is that this does also support the S Pen gestures that I showed you in the Samsung Notes application. If we jump back into the keyboard settings, there's a couple more things I wanna show you. If you scroll all the way down again, you'll see an option called handwriting. And if you select this, you have the option to enable pen detection. What this feature does is automatically enable the handwriting keyboard if you select a text field with the S Pen. So even if I were to switch to the regular keyboard here, then dismiss the keyboard, if I tap with the S Pen again, it's gonna automatically switch back to handwriting mode. If we jump back into the settings and then go back into the handwriting settings, you'll see two more options here. The first one is called candidate type, and this lets you pick between two different recognition modes. So if you notice that it isn't doing the best job recognizing your handwriting, try switching from recognition to prediction mode to see if that helps. The second option here is called recognition time, and this is useful if you're not quite writing fast enough and your words are being converted to digital text before you finish writing them. If that's the case, you can increase the recognition time so you have more time to write. Conversely, if you write incredibly quickly and you notice that you run out of space before it finishes recognizing your first few words, you can decrease this time so it recognizes your words faster so you spend less time waiting for the conversions. 
If you're someone who's not too quick with writing on the keyboard, and you'd also prefer not to handwrite your notes either, but you still want a fast way to write a lot of text, this next feature is for you. Jump back into settings, then scroll all the way to the bottom again, and go to swipe, touch, and feedback. Now towards the bottom, you'll see touch and hold spacebar. If you tap this, you see the cursor control option, which is what I showed you guys a moment ago, but you can actually switch that to voice input. Now, if I go back to my note application, then hold the space bar, I can say whatever's on my mind and it'll be automatically converted to digital text. And as you can see, it converts incredibly quickly. And you can even add punctuation at the end of a sentence, period. While we're in the Samsung Notes application, I do wanna quickly point out that if you're doing something like marking up a PDF, if you lift your pen off the screen, then press the S Pen button, you'll quickly switch to your next favorite pen. So if I click again, it'll now switch to the red pen. And if I double click, it'll switch back a pen. And this is an excellent feature for quickly marking up PDFs. If you wanna change your favorite pens, just tap the pen icon and tap this little pen with a star icon next to it. This shows all of your favorite pens. You can tap the plus icon to select a new pen style and add that to your favorite pens and you'll see this new pencil has been added. And one more thing you can do here is rearrange them. So if I long press one of these pens, I can drag it to a different position. And if I wanna delete one of these, I'll just tap the three dots here, tap delete, and tap the minus on whichever one I wanna delete. If I wanna make my existing pen a favorite pen, all I have to do is tap the star icon right here. And if I tap this icon here, it brings all of my favorite pens to a little window on the side. And you can of course move that window to the other side by dragging it over. If you wanna change what the S Pen button does when you press it, you can tap this little icon here that automatically appears whenever you detach the S Pen from the back of the tablet. And this is gonna bring up a little menu. And at the top of that menu, you'll see the name of the application you currently have open. If you tap that, you'll see exactly what happens when you either single press or double press the S Pen button. And if you tap one of those, you can change what it does. If you go to the settings in Samsung Notes, then scroll down a bit, you'll see an option called Clipping Options. If you enable this, you'll get the ability to quickly copy things from your gallery, internet browser, or your messages directly into a note when you have them open in either multi-window or pop-up view. To demonstrate how this works, I've opened up a Samsung Note, the Samsung internet browser, a message, as well as a pop-up of my gallery. If you look at the bottom of the Samsung Note, you'll see different options appear depending on which window I have selected. I could also tap this down arrow here and select one of the options based on the icon. So if I select the internet browser tab, I get the option to add a link to that internet page, or I can add the entire page into the note. Now, if I scroll through, you can see that I've added the entire web page. If I were to select an image in my gallery, then I can immediately attach that image directly into the note. And I can move the image around and resize as needed. And for the text message, I can add a link to that message and I can move that link around and also again resize it. And this will act as a link to take me directly back into that message. So if I close the messages application, then tapped this icon, it would jump right back to that specific message. If you go to settings, then scroll down to advanced features, then tap labs. At the bottom, you get an option called pin your favorite apps. If you enable this, then open up your apps edge, then tap these three bars at the bottom, you get a new option called pin. If you tap this, it's going to pin all of your applications from the Apps Edge to the edge of your screen. And from here, I can scroll through all of my applications and tap any one that I wanna open so I can very quickly jump back and forth between all of my favorite applications. And if instead of just tapping an application, I long press it, then drag it in, I can quickly open up the applications in multi-window mode. And you can do this with up to three different applications. When you drag the third application over, you can drag it to any one of the four corners, and then you'll be able to have your three applications open. If you wanted to open up a fourth application, you can do that, but instead of dragging it to one of the sides, instead, you'll just drag it to the middle, then you can open it up in a pop-up window. And this is a floating window that stays on top of the other windows. If I tap this blue bar at the top, I can then tap this little icon right here and change the transparency of that so I can see the application behind it. If I were to tap this icon instead, it would move it down into the multi-window view replacing one of the applications. If I wanted to move it back to pop-up view, I could just hold that blue bar for a second, then drag to the middle, and now it's back in pop-up view. And the same is true for putting it back into split screen view. If I long press it, then drag it to one of the corners, I can pop it right back into multi-window view.
Dragging these bars here lets me resize the apps, and that works for both the vertical and horizontal applications. Tapping the three dots in the middle lets me rotate the order of the applications, and if you use multiple applications in a specific orientation often, just tap the three dots, then tap this plus icon right here, and it'll push that group over into your app's edge. So now, if I closed all of these applications, then tap this icon right here, it'll reopen all those applications in the exact same orientation. If you have just two applications open when you tap the bar in the middle, you'll get the option to swap the position of those two applications. And in case you're wondering, you can have multiple applications open in pop-up view, and you can also resize these however you'd like. If you'd like to momentarily get these applications out of the way, you can tap these shrink arrows. If you shrink multiple apps, they'll all shrink down into a single bubble. And if you tap that, you'll be able to select which specific application you want to reopen in pop-up view. And if you want to reopen more than one, just keep tapping. Another great thing about these multi-view windows is that if I were to go home and navigate to another application like my settings app, for example, then I were to open up my recent applications, I'd still see that app pair right there. And if I tap that, it'll reopen those two applications exactly as they were in that split screen view. If you want to open up an application in this multi-window view that's not already in your app's edge, just tap this grid at the bottom and that'll bring up all of your applications. And from here, I can long press whichever other application I want and either drag it to open up in a multi-window view or drag it to the center as a pop-up. If you use multiple edge panels and not just the app's edge, you'll see this icon in the bottom right corner whenever you have the app's edge pinned. If you tap this icon, it'll bring out your other edge panels. Then when you're done using those edge panels, it'll switch back to having your apps pinned. If you decide that you no longer want to have all of your apps pinned to the side, you can just tap the pin icon in the bottom right, and it'll go back to the regular apps edge mode. And in case you're wondering, dragging out applications still works even if it's in this mode. If you use multi-window often, then you'll definitely want to enable this next feature. Go to your settings, then go back to advanced features, then labs, and enable these settings up here. The first one is probably the most important, and it says multi-window for all apps. And what this does is force every app to be able to open in multi-window view. This is important if you use apps like Instagram because Instagram will not open in multi-window view unless you have this enabled. The next option is full screen in split screen view. And this gives you more screen real estate for your applications by getting rid of the notification shade and these buttons on the bottom to give you a bit more space. For reference, here's what it looks like with this feature turned off. And here's what it looks like with the feature turned on. Just remember, when this feature is turned on, you will have to swipe down from the top twice to get to your notification shade, or swipe up from the bottom before you can see all of your navigation buttons. Show multi-window menu in full screen view adds this little bar at the top of any application that's opened in full screen mode to allow you to quickly get into multi-window mode. Having this bar here also allows you to quickly open up an application in pop-up view. If you also have a Samsung phone, you can make any pair of Bluetooth earbuds or headphones automatically switch between both devices whenever you start playing either music or video on one device or the other. The setup process for this will be a bit different depending on if you're using something like Samsung's earbuds or something like Sony's over the ear headphones. Let's start by showing the process for Samsung's earbuds. Since I have my earbuds in and they're connected to my Tab S8 Ultra, I'm gonna go to my quick toggles, my Tab S8 Ultra, and tap the text below the Bluetooth toggle. This will take me to some extra settings. From here, I'll tap details. This will bring me to even more settings. And now I just have to tap the settings gear next to my Samsung earbuds. This will bring up a final menu where I'll be able to enable auto switch to other devices. Once this is enabled on both devices, my earbuds will automatically switch back and forth between them whenever I start playing music or videos on either device. To demonstrate this, I've opened up different videos on YouTube on each device. Since my earbuds are currently connected to the Tab S8 Ultra, if I start playing this video, I'll hear the audio from my tablet. Now, if I press play on my phone, the audio will automatically switch over to the phone. And I'll get notifications at the top telling me that the Galaxy Buds Pro switched to the phone. Then if I press play over here again, it'll switch the earbuds back over to the tablet. For non-Samsung earbuds or headphones, the process is a little bit different. You have to go to your quick toggles on both devices and enable something called Music Share. Once this is enabled on both devices, all you need to do is connect your Bluetooth earbuds or headphones to just one of your devices. Right now, I have my Sony WH-1000XM4s connected to my Galaxy S22 Ultra. So since they're connected to the S22 Ultra, I need to go to the Media Output option on my tablet, and I'll see the wireless headphones appear here. 
Now if I tap this, it'll connect to those headphones through the S22 Ultra. Once this connection is made, it'll function exactly like Samsung's earbuds did. So if I tap play on my tablet, I'll hear the audio that's being played on the tablet. And if I tap play on my phone, it'll automatically pause the tablet and start playing the audio from the phone. And the same vice versa. The only difference is that you won't get a notification when it switches. If you pinch in on your home screen, this will bring up your home screen settings and allow you to do things like long press one of your pages and swap an entire page around. But more importantly, it gives you your widgets option. And if you select this, you have a new widget here called a smart widget. And what this does is allow you to stack multiple widgets on top of each other. So let's use this four by two widget, for example, and add that to my home screen. And now I can just swipe across to see all the different widgets. And if I long press it, I can resize the widget horizontally to stretch across the entire screen, but there is no way to stretch it vertically. Long pressing again shows these options down here, so I can change the current widget settings, which allows me to change the background and the transparency. And these settings are widget specific, so if I swipe back over to the calendar widget, long press here, and change these settings, my settings are a bit different. If I want to add a different widget, I can just long press, tap add widget, and select any widget I have available on my device. So let's go ahead and add the smart things widget and this will add all of these scenes. If I want to remove a widget, I just long press and I can remove just that widget and the rest of them will stay there. And if I tap this settings icon here, I get even more options. So here's where I can change all the settings for each individual widget. I can also add new widgets from this screen. And if I tap this edit icon, I can change the order of the widgets as well. This auto rotate widgets option will automatically change which widget is currently being shown based on what's most relevant at that given time. So if I have an appointment coming up soon, the calendar widget is going to automatically be in front. Then after the appointment, if I have a reminder due soon, it'll switch from the calendar to the reminder widget automatically. And customization service improves that feature by analyzing when you're using specific widgets and then automatically switches to those widgets around the time that you would typically be using them. When you're using the internet browser in dex mode, you may want to have some extra vertical space for the website you're looking at. To do this, tap these at three bars in the upper right corner to open up your settings, then tap the settings gear, then tap layout and menu, and switch it to together, and that'll take your search bar and your tabs and put them all in the same line, giving you a bit of extra vertical real estate. You can also decide not to show your bookmarks bar, and that'll give you even more vertical space. And if you want to fit even more information on the screen, Tap the three bars again, then tap zoom, and you can change the zoom level here. And you can also choose to apply this to all of your open tabs or apply it to just this specific tab. And to be clear, this is entirely different than pinching to zoom. So if I went back to 100%, tapped OK, if I tried to pinch to zoom out, I wouldn't be able to zoom out any further. Taking a screenshot with a Tab S8 Ultra can be a bit cumbersome because you have to press the side key and volume down keys at the same time. To make this a lot easier, you can go to settings, Scroll down to advanced features, then go to motions and gestures, then turn on palm swipe to capture. This allows you to just swipe the edge of your hand across the screen to quickly take a screenshot. And while we're on this menu, I might as well take the time to point out these other features here. So if you turn this top one on, you can double tap the screen to turn it on instead of having to press the power key. If you enable this second feature, you can double tap any empty space on your home screen to turn the tablet screen off. And if you do a lot of reading on your tablet, you can enable this third feature, which will keep your screen on as long as you're looking at it. And lastly, you can mute any alarms by putting your palm on the screen. If you go to settings, then scroll down to advanced features, then scroll down a bit more, you'll see an option called video call effects. If you enable this, you'll be able to use something called auto framing in almost any video calling app you have installed, even if it's not natively supported. Auto framing is a feature that can track multiple people with the camera as they move around and zoom in or out as needed to keep everyone in the frame. This is great for video calls with your family or conference calls where you may need to give a presentation. This next feature is one of the most powerful features available on any Samsung device. And that feature is actually an application that Samsung made called GoodLock. To get that application, you'll have to go to the Samsung Galaxy Store and search for the app called GoodLock. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and open up the application and you'll be met with a ton of customization features. And there's actually two pages of features. 
There is so much here that I had to create two separate dedicated videos a while back when I first covered this. And if you want to see the full potential of good luck, I highly recommend that you guys check those videos out by clicking the links in the description. For now, we're just going to focus on this plugin here called Multistar. Once you install this plugin, you get some really powerful multi-window features, as well as some great Samsung DeX features. Starting with the multi-window features, you get the option to quick launch multi-window by simply holding the recent apps button. This will put your existing app in multi-window view and let you select any of your other applications to open in multi-window on the other side. Multi-window screen zoom will shrink the size of everything within a multi-window so that you can see more information in that particular window. And you have the option to enable this for split screen view as well as pop-up view. For reference, here's what it looks like with the feature turned off. And here's what it looks like with the feature turned on. As you can see, you get a lot more information in each app. Removing the blur effect when adjusting the split screen view just makes it so that instead of having a blur effect, all you'll see is this shaded line when you're adjusting the bar. And for reference, if I turn that back off, you'll see that everything blurs when I adjust the line. Pop-up view action lets you open up an application in pop-up view simply by dragging down from the upper right or left corners. And this slider here lets you adjust the area that's sensitive to that gesture. Pop-up view minimization will make it so that if you have a window in pop-up view mode, then you press the home button, that window will not shrink down into a tiny pop-up. So if I turn that feature off, then press the home button again, you'll see that that shrinks down to a floating icon. And these two features here are the features that I showed you earlier to get more screen real estate for your multi-windows. If we scroll back to the top, you'll see I Love Galaxy Tablet, and this has two features that were moved into the standard settings that I showed you guys earlier. And the last menu here is I Love Samsung DeX, which adds some great features. The first option is called Rotate DeX with our best. And what this does is take any application that'll try to open up in portrait mode and attempt to force that to open up in landscape mode. This particular feature is great for apps that don't natively support tablets. High resolutions for external displays allows you to get the max resolution of UWQHD even when you don't have external power connected to your Tab S8 Ultra. Typically, you would need something like a powered USB-C hub to get anything more than 1080p on an external display. But with this feature, you can just plug straight in and get the max resolution. Run many apps at the same time allows you to have more than five applications open at the same time while in Samsung DeX mode. This won't be terribly useful if you're only ever going to be using DeX mode on the tablet, but when connected to a much larger external display, this could prove to be much more useful. And Auto Open Last App makes it so that whenever you switch into DeX mode from the regular tablet mode, whichever application was currently active on the tablet will automatically reopen in DeX mode. If you want to get to your quick toggles faster than swiping down twice with one finger, you can just swipe down once with two fingers. And while we're talking about the toggles, if you want to quickly get to the settings for any toggle, just tap the text below the toggle. And this works with any toggle. And some toggles offer extra features when you tap the text as well. Like for the flashlight, you can either increase or decrease the brightness. The S Pen is a pretty vital component of the Tab S8 Ultra, and you definitely won't want to lose it. So to make it easier to keep track of it, go ahead and jump into your settings, scroll down until you get to Advanced Features, then tap S Pen, and scroll to the bottom, and enable Warn if S Pen left behind. And what this is going to do is if your S Pen is disconnected from the tablet, then you pick the tablet up and walk away, you'll get a notification on the tablet reminding you that the S Pen is not connected. If you often share your Tab S8 Ultra with a friend or family member, then you're going to love this next feature. Go to Settings and scroll down to Accounts and Backup, then select Users, and here you can add independent profiles for each user. And what that means is each user gets their own login, their own applications installed, their own home screen setups. It's effectively like having two completely separate tablets in one. And when you go to add a user, you get the option to create a restricted profile. And what that does is limit the user's access to specific apps and content. This is particularly useful if you have kids in your family that will occasionally use the tablet. Since my wife and I are the only ones that will be using this tablet, I'm just going to create a regular user account for her. First, I'll need to create a nickname for the account. I'll just call it wife. And I can also change the icon by choosing an image or taking a photo if I want to have her face there. Then I'll tap OK to set the account up. And just like that, the account is ready. And there's multiple ways to switch accounts. The first is to come all the way back to this account settings and switch to the other account here. Or I can just pull the notification shade down twice and select this new icon up here and select one of the other users. When you select a new user for the first time, it'll take a minute to switch over and then load you back into a brand new lock screen. When you unlock it for the first time, you'll be taken to a welcome screen where you can set up the account 
install any specific applications you want, and set up your home screen the way you like it. One important thing to note is that the original user is the administrator for all accounts, and that means that they can uninstall applications on other accounts. And the original user is the only one who has access to do that. So now that my wife's account is set up, I'll get a new icon here in the upper right corner of my lock screen. And if I tap that, I can switch to the other account. If you wanna see more than 20 powerful S Pen specific features, check out this video over here. If you wanna see even more unknown features, check out that video over there. Both of these videos show the features on a Galaxy S22 Ultra, but most of the features also apply to the Tab S8 series. And if you guys wanna see deep dive videos like this for the Galaxy Z Fold 4, Flip 4, or Galaxy Watch 5, consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you don't miss the uploads. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.